on, I need you focused in on it today. No, seriously, we've got a lot of stuff to get through, and if you don't focus now, your actions at work could cost us and affect lives. Come on then. Now we know you don't have time to read this book before every shift, so we thought we'd break it down for you. First things first, do you understand the scale of the job? Do you have the right competences? PPE? Do you know where the site is? Yeah, but every site is different. And different locations come with different risks. And different solutions. Do you have your work pack, relevant permits, notices, street work site specific risk assessment? Yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it is vital. If you don't have your street work site specific risk assessment, ask for it and do it. It's not just a box ticking exercise. This is important. We got everything. Scale of job. Competences, PPE. Plant tools and fittings. Work packs, permits, notices. Permit conditions. Site specific risk assessment. Right. Who's got the keys? Give them you, mate. Well, here they are. Come on, lads. And don't be like those two. Don't forget your paperwork. So, you parked up in a safe place ready to carry out your initial risk assessment. You need to ask yourself, How will someone using the road or footway from any direction know what is happening and know what is expected of them? Is the site safe to work in and safe for the general public? Including people in wheelchairs, parents with prams and people with disabilities. And these need to be considered every minute of every day. It's our duty to make sure everybody is safe. It's also really important to keep your customers notified of what will be happening throughout the job. Some of the work we do will inconvenience them, but it's our job to keep them informed and to keep providing them with a top-notch service. Remember, take photos of the site in damaged areas. We don't want to be liable for damage we haven't caused. <laughs> Then, it's time to check plans against markings. How do you know that drawing is correct? We don't. It's in date, but we still need to check. You'll need to ask yourself, how will I manage pedestrians? Mick, what are you thinking here? Can I maintain the existing footway? If not, where can I direct pedestrians to? Don't forget, we're going to have to make space to store the excavated spoil. Then, you'll need to look at the width of the road, the speed limit and the traffic count to establish what, if any, traffic management is needed. <laughs> then you can start placing your signs. You need to make sure that your signs and barriers are safe and positioned so as to minimise risk. And it's not good enough to have one risk assessment. You need to be constantly assessing the risks, whether it's in the morning because residents have moved cones to park, because you've taken a break, or because the Vacex or grab wagon have cleared the spoil. You'll need to ask yourself, will someone using the road or footways from any direction understand exactly what's happening and what's expected of them? Have I made the site safe to work in and safe for the general public? Your risk assessment must demonstrate that you've identified the risks and taken action to mitigate or eliminate them. You will need the street work site-specific risk assessment. Check your plans and paperwork once more, making sure they match the markings already on the ground. So Mick, could you explain a bit about this procedure we're going to do next? We've checked the plans, but they're only a guidance. So to stay safe and avoid damage, we're going to use Cat and Jenny. 
you know, a couple of girls called Cat and Jenny, don't we, mate? Sure do, yeah. That's it, lads. Get these signs out. Once all of the signs are positioned correctly and safely, you're then good to call or send the start notice. And remember, follow procedure. If in doubt, refer to the red book. If you're not sure, contact your line manager. Let's do highways the right way. Let's get it right first time. <laughs>